Good day everybody out there in Watchland. I promise I will not kill you today with a two hour video on how to do something. So, but I figured I'd make another one because it's the break and I can make things during the break. So, this is an Elgin uh, pocket watch. It's a uh, fairly good condition. Uh, the back's worn off the case a bit here, so, and it's funny when these cases say in the back, if you open the back of the case up here, and you look at it and it says uh, gold, um, what does this one say here, get my glasses off and my other glasses on, it says warranty 20 years, weighed worth um, and warranty 20 years, so this is gold filled when it says that. And sometimes they're a 10 year warranty, uh, sometimes a 20 year warranty. This is really the gold fill. This is the thickness of the gold on the uh, pocket watch here. Um, and they guarantee that, that over a 20 year period, it won't wear out that uh, layer of gold on the pocket watch. That's all that means. So if they're guaranteed for 20 or 25 years, there's usually a good thickness on there. So in this case, this watch was used a lot because it got through the the gold and it got down to the uh, brass or whatever this is base metal brass anyway it got down to the, the base here so this is the pocket watch here it's a um, it's a BW Raymond which is nice brand Elgin USA 19 jewels uh, adjusted to five positions that's a uh, very good it's a uh, not a railroad grade watch but usually uh, if it was 21 jewels and adjusted to five positions, chances are it would be a railroad grade watch. Um, it works. There's um, that's I just moved it a bit and it's got a little leftover power there. It's got a barrel, uh, basically a I think they're called going barrels, but anyway, it's got a barrel under here that uh, that um, uh, it's jeweled, so it's a pretty high end uh, movement. So today, I'm going to have a look at this watch, and I remember looking at it before, I think, and I'm not sure whether I was successful or unsuccessful with it, but but I'm going to have a look at it again, because um, it's got a slipping mainspring. So when I wind the watch up, the mainspring in here just lets go and slips, so I can only get so much power onto, the, uh, onto this uh, movement because of the slipping mainspring. So, so what I want to do is just take this thing apart, um, I'm being brave here because it is working. Uh, there's also a screw missing right here that I'll want to replace, and that's in the center wheel. Um, and I just uh, need to uh, go through really quickly, uh, get the thing um, disassembled. So I don't know if I'll show you the disassembly because that will uh, waste your time. So I'm going to pause this and come back with a whole lot of watch parts. Hands are off. Preparing to remove movement from case. Movement coming out of case. Removing face retaining screws. Uh, putting back face retaining screws. I just thought, why, why should I bother um, removing the face when I really just want to work on the barrel here? Um, I did clean this watch a while back and I'm positive because it is spanking clean, I believe. I'll look through later on the magnifying glass, but uh, or the microscope, but pretty darn sure I cleaned it, but I'm just going to remove the um, the barrel and have a look at that, because I believe that's all I really need to do here. Um, so I don't need to remove the rest of it. I believe also that I've removed the uh, power from the, uh, the barrel, but <clears throat> just in case. I forgot. Um, I'm going to let me see. See which bench keys actually fit here. Too many bench keys. I should stop action this part here. And that's that. And then I'm going to pardon my reach. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, put a little tension on here and then get this click spring out of the way. So I can relieve the barrel here. Yeah, there was 99% of the power was out of that barrel. I did remove just a little bit more. Um, and then um, I think I can just lift 
not worry about removing the face and the uh, hairspring and all the rest of that stuff or the uh, balance cock and all the rest of that because that will just be a big pain. Uh, I'm doing this absolutely wrong here. I should never do that because I really just want to uh, <coughs> I just want to get to that barrel and it doesn't seem like it's a super easy way to do it so I think I need to remove the uh, ratchet wheel here first. I don't know if this one is backwards or not. Yeah it is. Some of the European watches and the maybe uh, North American ones, the screw has got three marks on it, three or four marks on it, which will tell you that that barrel, in fact, that screw goes the other way, which is pretty handy. Um, the other ones, not like this one obviously doesn't, for, doesn't look like it tells me that 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 screw goes the other way. I'm trying to grab this little wheel here. Doesn't want to come out. Come on. Just keeps falling right back into where it was. Stop it. There we go. Stubborn parts. There we go. And now I can uh, unscrew. I've got to take this wheel off the top here, but I don't want to i be very careful doing this because, um, first of all, I don't want to strip the screws at all. And I'm not sure. These things don't seem like they're in tight. Like that one there. Plus, I don't want to mark the uh, movement. If I do make a mark on the movement, I can uh, probably polish it out uh, and not worry about it too much. This one here is un ungrabbable right now. Come on. I know I'm going to, there we go, just turn it a bit, and then you've got the position, so, got to use the right screwdriver for the right job, this is a uh, touchy one, because it's, the barrel is jeweled, I don't think that's out, I didn't hear it, I didn't hear the screw make a noise, so, that's two, this one here just seems to be rotating, so I'm going to, See if I can pop it out with Rodico. Not sure if I can. If I can't, I may just have to wedge my uh, screwdriver underneath the wheel and see if I can move it that way. But there you go. Pull the whole thing out that way. It's another way of doing it, I guess. Which means this screw is completely useless. It's just there for good looks. Good looks and whatever else. And I can see it's a different type of screw altogether. So whoever did this with the barrel, I'm going to test that screw hole to see if the <coughs> other screw actually works on that screw hole. Because if the screw hole is stripped, then i got another problem I've got to resolve with this. Right? And I don't want to have to... I don't want to combine my problems here. Because all I really wanted to do was have a look at that mainspring and see if there's anything I could do with the uh, with its condition. So I'm just gonna I may have to screw this while I'm holding it because it's supposed to be sit seated in the um, in the uh, wheel. Let me see if that's got grip on it. Because if it does, then I can just go find another screw a proper screw like this and then and does that have grip yeah that's pretty good so that means that 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 fake screw needs to be replaced by a proper screw so i'll have to go in my uh i have a billion pocket watch screws my pocket watch screw collection i go in there and then replace this this bad one here so and <clears throat> it shouldn't matter what hole I use then so that's the jewel out of the barrel so I'm hoping uh, hoping I use that a lot when you're repairing watches the word hoping um, I think I said in the last video that I always do one screw and then I remove it with my tweezers well I do except when it's like a plate like this and I can probably do two at once save some time so as not to 
bore the audience. And this is a, uh, I should be telling cool stories while I'm doing this too. So not a cool story, but a story. Um, I'm relearning the lead break from Stairway to Heaven. So, you know, the famous song Stairway to Heaven, the one that goes, I won't sing it that much, but it goes, Anyway, so that lead break is something I learned a long time ago, but I forgot it. Because if you don't keep practicing your lead breaks over and over again, you will lose them. You will lose your lead break. This is an interesting looking barrel. Um, it looks pretty serious. Scary. It's a scary looking barrel. Uh, anyway, you'll lose your lead breaks if you don't keep practicing them. So I'm um, hoping I don't have to take the center wheel off because that'll be a pain in the Batinsky. Uh, but this doesn't look like this will ride over the top of the uh, movement. So, remember earlier when I said I had to remove the face? I think I was right. Because <coughs> I thought maybe the wheel could come out without the center wheel being a problem. But it looks as though I need to remove the face and then, and then to get the barrel out. Which is a pain in the butt and uh but necessary so let me just quickly remove this face here um this also is just sitting here and will probably end up falling out well like i normally do if you take a picture of that movement because for some reason you forget anything about the movement like how do i where the gears go or anything you can uh, always refer back to your iphone photo of the movement and then you're, you're all set. So anyway, when you're learning that lead break for Stairway to Heaven, um, you got to play this one part that's got this lick in it that just continues over and over again. If you guys are any of you guys are guitar players, um, that one lick does you do it ten times, which is like a lot. It's kind of like Lenny Kravitz, "Are You Gonna Go My Way?" That particular start lick. I actually use my third finger and then I go to my second finger because my third finger usually gets worn out halfway through doing that lick. So, but last night or yesterday I was working on the um, working on the Stairway to Heaven lead break part two, the second part of it, and I started wearing my finger out, the third finger. And by the time I didn't kind of didn't notice because you get used to the pain on the on your fingers. Steve Ray Vaughan, in fact, used to put crazy glue on his fingers because um, because of the pain, or because he'd wear his he'd play so often that he wore his fingers out, and so he'd use crazy glue to. Uh, what am I doing here? What fell out? Something fell out. Yeah, I'd move that fell out. I'm way too close to the movement right now. Um, Anyway, he put crazy glue on his fingers because he knew that uh, he had to keep playing. He's no, there was no not playing anymore, so so the crazy glue helped him uh, keep playing, um, which was, I guess, a great thing. Um, and but I'm not going to start putting crazy glue on my fingers. Period. So we just get rid of the hour wheel here because it is in the way. There's a a minute wheel but it's underneath here so I just have to pop the cannon pinion out oh I don't now how did that get removed without removing the cannon pinion it just fell out oh I know the minute I removed this gear here which stands up seemed to be in the way somehow but that gear goes right in here it's a beautiful watch actually it's a beautiful movement i to make sure I don't break anything when I put it back together again Anyway, let me just, I uh, was hoping to just put this wheel back in place without too much problem. There we go. I think that's in there, yeah. And there we go there. So, and I am going to, I'm going to move these little case screws over here on the side. And I'm going to put this movement, just put it down right here. I didn't have to remove the cannon pinion or anything. 
and I would cover that movement but I'm hoping I don't have to do much more because here's the mainspring um, it's a big big a uh, big uh, I'm almost sore there but it's a big mainspring um, it looks as though it's got a slice right in here um, it also looks as though it's not snapped in to the barrel so again I think a picture of the mainspring is required before I start uh, farting with it you don't fart with a mainspring without a picture so it's pretty much like that and there's nothing on this side I might be able to pop it out but I'm not actually sure how this mainspring works so it looks as though it's just sitting there in place um, and I have to figure out how to actually get this mainspring out of this out of here so which is a totally different thing there doesn't seem to be a slice on it anywhere where I can just pick it up and move it um, I might be able to just pop it out by putting pressure on the bottom I'm not sure um, sometimes that works but this one might not be able to do that hey crack the plastic <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very funny yeah that doesn't seem to work so I'm gonna pause for a second while I figure this out all right so this mainspring I'm not sure why I have this plastic container here but this mainspring wraps around this arbor here and it looks like I don't think no if this arbor comes out it should come out but there's the barrel for the mainspring and I just simply reversed, I took it out a bit and then reversed it and now I gotta walk the mainspring out because this thing is gonna fly in my face any second now but I gotta figure out why this thing is slipping if I look closely at the thing before I wind it out and look at the uh, the way it sits in here it's kind of a weird configuration so I have to wind it out and then figure out whether somebody just jury rigged this thing so I'd be back. All right, here it is. There's the end of the mainspring. So it's kind of, it looks like an automatic movement, but it looks a strange looking mainspring. So it's got this thing here on it. Then it's got a hole on it over here. Then it has a tab on it over here. So it's got a little bit of everything. Um, I wound it out of the barrel like that, so I probably should take another picture of that, because if I don't, I'm going to forget. Um, it looks like it only has a tab on one side, so how the heck did I put that in? That would have been in like this, right? And this would have been in like this, on top like that. So, so when I wind this back in, I can actually wind it into... I think I wind it into this barrel, but it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to have to think about it, and I'm going to take a picture and come right back. All right, so I think I figured out why this thing is slipping. <clears throat> so the hook for the barrel is on this side. It's pretty obvious. So when you put the spring back in, the spring has to go in this way because, because of that hook. And so, and the barrel goes on top. So if I flip the barrel, flip the spring around and look at the top part of the barrel and then go to the end, this is the connect, the connection, this is the connector on the end. And, and yes, I can see the tab here that obviously sticks through this little slot, right? But that is not much of a tab to go through that slot. And I suspect that, um, that this thing is just slipping. I think if you wind it up all the way, that tab ends up not catching into that barrel slot. So, which, you know, maybe, um, maybe what I need to do, if I were to file, take that tab and file a little hook on the tab, because it looks like there's a bit of a ramp on that tab, which is going to cause it to ride up that slot in there. And if I were to file a hook, like a little angle on that, in this tab here, then it might, uh, it might allow it to, um, to not, to stay in place and basically catch on the end, on the edge of that, that tab there. It doesn't look too deep though. 
that's the problem like this thing looks doesn't look deep at all so but maybe filing that filing that on the inside would allow that to hook on the tab so but first thing I'm going to do is clean the barrel out a little bit of uh, lighter fluid in there and then and then I'm going to just degrease this barrel a bit because it's greasy as heck it's a really interesting looking barrel with arbor though the barrel and the arbor seem to be one piece unless this thing just flies out on me in a second seem to be in one piece in you know one piece which makes sense because the whole thing turns as one piece and then the top part is where the spring actually resides so and getting the spring back in on top of this barrel arbor is a real pain in the butt because I've done this before and it doesn't it's not easy and I think I've got most of the grease out of here so. and this is actually in pretty good condition it's not too bad it's not as ugly as I thought it was so and I want to make sure that this is this is also one piece so so the whole thing is really that slot and uh, I don't think I've got any other mainsprings that I could use instead of this one. I could check and see, but this one seems to be the right size and strength. It just may need a, a little bit of a revision on the, uh, a little bit of work on the, uh, let me see if I got any watch paper here. I do, I do! J'avais le watch paper. That's my really bad French. J'avais le watch papier de watch. So, ah! Trying to grab it, and I need to wet my fingers and slide it. There we go. I want to use all my watch paper. I only have 5,000 sheets, so I've got to make sure I sparely use it sparingly because I don't want to be down to 4,000 sheets in the next 10 years. That would be tragic. So let's just uh, grab this and put it on the watch paper, and then. I don't want to put finger cots on. Oh, by the way, Mark, who's uh, the pro, I think, in watchmaking of all of us, he's on YouTube and he's got a watch repair lessons and he's really good. So highly recommend watching his stuff. If you get totally bored watching my stuff and you want to do it right, then watch his stuff. So anyway, Mark, uh, you know what? Should I throw this in and clean this up anyway? Might as well. So anyway uh mark recommended that i just buy a pair of set of gloves and so i went on the old amazon and and i bought a the not latex it's a not different type of material but it comes with um i've cleaned this already it looks clean uh it comes with uh 100 gloves for i think it was like 18 dollars or something so i got 100 gloves for 18 bucks and which is a good deal um, and uh, then you either wear the glove just as a glove or you take the glove and you cut the fingers off and you use the glove as finger cots which is another way of doing it um, not sure why I'm putting all this stuff in the bath because it looks spotless I know I cleaned this already I know it I'm not throwing that in that's like mint that's mint that's mint that's mint so just stop cleaning stuff whenever I get stuff to clean I just start cleaning it it's like a I'm the cleaner I'm the cleaner uh, just disassemble everything and clean it so even if it doesn't need cleaning clean it anyway it's like I don't know what it's like anyway so I bought all these gloves they should be in the they should be coming in today and and I will use those instead of my fingies even though on the watch blog there's a gentleman that we he refers to himself as old hippie and he said and he's been repairing watches his whole life and he's never used finger cots so I don't know if that's good or bad or whatever but he hasn't so so there you go so this is clean now just trying to D just dry it off a bit. I think I get my blower out and dry it off and I'd be back. Hey, this is my blower technique. 
amazing technique with the blower. Shitty. If I hold it in the right in the left hand, I have shitty blower technique. But in the right hand, unbeatable blower technique. This is like amazing. And this just helps get rid of the uh, lighter fluid. It just evaporates pretty quick when you do that. And I don't have to deal with that. Ah, done. So that is that. Um, so that's, these two are dry now. Just get them off the lighter fluid, or the uh, watchmaker's paper. And I just, I reuse that paper because you can just, it, the lighter fluid evaporates from that as well. So, so there's barrel, there's the barrel. And the spring, of course, fell down, and it's down by my feet right now. Let me reach down and grab that spring. So, it doesn't look set or anything, which is great. Um, it just looks... I don't know if I trust that little freaking thing right there. Like, can that, will that hook the barrel? And if it doesn't, what do I do? So, I'm going to have to do some more thinking, and I'll be back. Now, I just ran a cloth down the spring, too, while I'm thinking, just to get rid of the uh, grease from the... Uh, or the oil that was previously in there. There was actually quite a lot of it sitting in there. So again, the problem I'm having is that when this thing goes in here, with that little tiny hook right there, it doesn't seem to be much of a hook, and I'm going to see if I can file that so it stays in. But if you flip that over now and put the barrel in there, and you've got the barrel, it's sitting like this, there's no positive pressure pushing up on that hook to keep it hooked in here. As a matter of fact, if there's any any pressure movement at all that's uh, it'll just jump out of that slot because there's no positive pressure so it's not like you're putting a barrel cap on there if you put a barrel cap on there and there's a hook on both sides fine it would it will stay in place but so the only other thing I can think of doing is maybe giving it a little bit of volume on the other side maybe to uh, to provide that pressure um, otherwise it's just this this thing here is preventing a lot of slipping so it's like a an automatic pocket an automatic watch the other thing I could do is put barrel grease um, on the wall of the barrel like an automatic pocket watch or an automatic watch um, so it will provide enough friction so it doesn't slip so that's the other option I think I will do that anyway right at any rate um, and see if that makes a marginal improvement in being able to wind this thing. So, again, I'll be back in a second with my files because I think I will take, I will put a little bit more of an edge on that so it catches the barrel better. So I have my vintage set of files here, and so my file of choice is a one, a file that is triangular. So it's got a bit of a triangle on it, and then if I look at this notch here, um, it's going to be on the edge the other way around like this so I want the hook I want it to be I want there to be a bit of a hook on here so what I can I'm going to just hold this like this for now and see if I can get any action on here actually it seems to be I need to grip this a bit better so again I got all kinds of tools for stuff like that so let me see if I got one with a jaw that can grip it Maybe this one here. So I'm not sure, but let me have a look at that. See if I got any grip on that at all. Probably not enough. You gotta make noise when you do this. That way it sounds like it's hard. Slide that up like this, and then well, is that enough of a grip? Because I just need to get in the edge as an angle at an angle to work on that. And then I have a look at what I'm doing. This is not too bad. That does provide a bit of an angle. So I want to just claw it right in there. With the intent of providing a good notch. The good notch. It sounds like a TV show the good notch let me see what that looks like mm, that's pretty good actually 
that's a lot more of a notch. I'll show you a close-up in a second, but do just a bit more of this thing here. Put a little bit of pressure on the notch here, because I want this thing to have an angle to it. There we go. All right, so that's perfect. So I'm going to just give you a close-up here. Stand. All right, there's a notch that I was able to... Uh, there's a notch there that I was able to create, and you see how that's that's a good angle on that. Um, that was a little tiny tab. Now it's a lot bigger, and it, there's a notch on there, so it's going to slide when there's pressure on that. When that there's a little groove in the top here, and that will catch on that notch when it turns, and that'll that'll ride up as opposed to riding down. So that should hold that spring in place um, without a problem. So um, I'm going to do, I will put some grease on the barrel, I think, too, though, for this. Normally these things are facing outward when you're doing this, but I did all of the, the math on this. And I think whoever repaired this pocket watch before uh, wasn't paying attention to something, and he was basically bought a spring that had this leaf on it, but realized that it had to go the other way. So... Maybe I'm a dough head, and when I put it back together, I realize I've screwed up, but I'll just make sure I check it five times before I uh, put it back together. Anyway, that's the notch right there, so I use this handy-dandy gripping jobby do that I've got to hold that. It's actually to hold something else, because it's got a center piece in there, so I think it's used to hold maybe um, pi uh, pivots. On a, on a wheel or something because it's not just a complete jaw it has an opening in the middle so that's kind of cool so all right there's my barrel grease expired 2017 but i don't care so there you go i think it may have expired but it's still good i'm not buying a whole new thing of barrel grease because it's off by a tad i don't think it's turned into something else so there it is there um, and what I want to do here is just put a little bit of grease on the inside of uh, this barrel right here because it's the other barrel is not doing anything so you just want to put grab the grease um, got it all over the place here looks like earwax not that I know what earwax looks like but I'm sure there are people out there that understand what earwax looks like doctors PhDs in earwax. So I want to put a bit of grease on the inside of that barrel. And I don't need, I'm going to put it in two places because I don't need to spread it all over the friggin' place. But that grease helps that spring grip just enough. Yeah, maybe I'll spread it a little more than two places here since I got enough of this grease in my hands. And then I might show you me struggling to put the spring back in. Because that's always fun to watch. I got enough grease to grease like a billion watches. Maybe more. So let me just clean that oiler off a bit. Poke, 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 poke. So, uh, <clears throat> anyway, I woke up this morning and my fingertip and a big blister on the end of it so I took a, a lance that I have very it's a it's for blood blood monitoring lance and I took that lance and I attacked my blister actually I just poked it just a bit and <clears throat> and I was able to um, to get rid of the uh, crappy dew on the blister and then I'm gonna make sure that this actually is not too so that's pretty tight on there so yeah anyway you gotta wind it into this this here goes like that catches like that which means it's on this side and this is the top which means it's this way and if I go to the end of this that's where the tab is so I turn the whole thing around again and it's this way so you got to make sure you put it in right if you don't uh, you're basically screwed so, and when you do this, I got these stupid glasses that just slide off my nose. They're a pain in the butt. Um, but putting this in is going to be tough. 
it doesn't look like it winds in nicely so if I bend it right there usually um, when I do this you got to be on one side of it so it connects on the other side of it so and putting the first bend in by hand is painful so I'm going to decamera this so I can do it without showing you the pain and get right on top of it <clears throat> all right the last little bit of me hand winding into this thing because it's it is a hard job the lining the tab up and then hand winding it I'm not sure how you do it with a I have mainspring winders but I don't know how you do it with a mainspring winder because you got to line that tab up and then pluck the mainspring in and it wouldn't want, just doesn't want to do it so there it is there inside and then this is the part where it's doubled over so the question is will I see a tab through here I think I do actually there it is there so the tab is right there um, so what I think I'll do is I'll take a pair of pliers or my tweezers and then squeeze that to see if the tab comes through where the hole is I'm not sure if it will I can see the tab there but I may just take a staking set and then, and then just, just pound down on that just a tiny bit so I'll be back they're breaking all the laws of watchmaking. I don't want to warp the barrel, so i got to be very careful when I do this. So there's the tab on one side, and it looks like it wants to come through, but it hasn't come through yet. And there's the top of the, uh, the barrel, and I just move a blank area of this over. Um, I don't know if I can get that in there, actually without causing the problems. I may have to put a I may have to put a flat stake in there or nubby snub nub a snubby nub like that one because I don't want to punch the bottom of that barrel at all so but I also don't want to ruin this mainspring as well so if I do that um, I know you can barely see this because I don't want to refocus so so let me just line that up again and it's right over there and I want to make sure that that stake does not touch the edge of that barrel because if it does I'm going to ruin the barrel which is the last thing I want to do so I just want it to touch the spring so I've just tapped on it and eh, it looks like it's moved up, moved over a bit, which is nice. And then I'm going to tap on the edge here too, because this needs to be in the, as well. And I'm just trying to tap the mainspring so that on the edge of that mainspring where I put it in by hand, it's not protruding causing that part of the barrel to uh, to come out so I want it to have the best grip possible on that uh, you know what I don't have to worry about the edge of the barrel because the mainspring is higher than the barrel so I don't have an issue there so let me just finish this off I'll probably get some comments on what the hell I'm doing, but that looks pretty good there. And do I have any more? Yeah, it's sticking out a bit more. And I'm still not sure whether it'll grip or not, though. We shall see. If it doesn't grip, then I've got to go to plan B or C or even maybe plan D. Whatever that is. Plan D is probably always the best plan. Just don't want to warp the barrel, so no problem there. So that's there. Well, it's done. Staking sets can be used for everything, I find. So everything but cooking steak. Not used for cooking steak because you use barbecues instead. Anyway, so that's done. 
put the hammer away because you got to basically make sure you don't have hammers near anything because you will cause all kinds of problems. So that's that little grippy grips in there, and I don't. I'm not going to put any um, oil in this spring. I think it's a more modern mainspring that's not going to require oil. But I'm going to see if I can put this on and then slip it over. So that's always a fun thing to do when you're putting the barrels back in. You got to kind of roll it like that and then hope that it rolls in. Hey, look at that. Rolled in perfectly. So there it is. And there's a little tab I I redid on the top. It is sticking out a bit. I don't know if that's going to help or not, but it seems to be a bit better. Um, and <clears throat> I'm going to just reassemble this to see if it's if I've gotten anywhere. Oh, another thing is a minimum. At least the barrel grease will help give it a bit of action, um, so it doesn't slip because it looks like an automatic. Uh, it looks like an automatic mainspring inside of a an old pocket watch. I, I thought it was basically a, something broken, uh, but it's not. So it's an automatic mainspring. So let me just reassemble this watch and have it, and then wind it up and see if it's how much it slips if it does slip. All right, so the barrel's back in there nicely. So I had to put this back in here with the crown wheel and then you just sort of look underneath hold that with your finger and then flip the lever back into the slot here. It's pretty easy to do. Um, <clears throat> and then you should probably give it a little tiny bit of oil here. So, And because I don't it looks pretty dry. So I'm going to do that while I'm, while I'm at this, because I might as well. And <clears throat> done nothing like a little bit of oil to make your day go better. Eh? A little bit of the thicker stuff uh, on the gears here. And that oil usually just goes from one gear to the other, and then it transfers the oil over. So and. This all rides, the very tip of this rides in the movement, so I'll make sure I put some right there. And <clears throat> there we go, that should do there. So, and I'll oil that later once I get the plate back on. But the plate can go on now, it shouldn't be a big deal to get this plate back on. There's only, there's only two pivots I think that need to go through. So, two pivots in the barrel, so it's not horrendously bad. Uh, usually, um, it's a little tougher because of the, uh, if you're taking off the other plate with the mainspring and everything else, it tends to be a bit more, more of an issue. So, and the <coughs> that gear under there is going to require a bit of nudging to get in, so I'm not going to nudge in public. All right, so that's in. So then I just have to replace, just make sure I put these screws on the plate before the plate decides to go for a walk. Um, so I'm breaking my own rules here and putting two screws in at once. Um, so it's just to get these out of the way. And that plate is in there nicely, so there's no problem there at all. And screw that down. And then screw this down. Put a little pressure on the center wheel to see if it moves the movement. Just do that for a second and then put a little pressure there and that's definitely providing a little bit of yabba dabba do for the movement. Which means the gears are all in place. <clears throat> I can also, what I've done before, because it's a little bit more dangerous, but if I put a little bit of pressure on the mainspring barrel like that, I'm just I got my screwdriver in between the teeth and I'm putting a very little bit of pressure on there just to make sure that the mainspring <coughs> is actually, or the barrel is actually in place and all these gears are good. So just taking the pressure off. Um, now I just have to do a little bit of a reassembly work. And in this case here, I have got the uh, the jewel that goes on top here, 
and that goes like this so when I oil that after the jewel goes on top like that and then the the uh, wheel here goes on top here like this and then this goes on like so and then I've got to screw that down so in the words of Arnold Schwarzenegger I'll be back well, this is pretty touchy work I used the screwdriver and the tweezers to put this in place so and this should screw in so I'm going to be very careful that the screwdriver I don't put too much pressure on the screwdriver because if the screwdriver slips in any way which it seems to be doing a bit it's going to scratch the uh, wheel here so if you're if you're working on somebody's watch and uh, you put a massive scratch along that that wheel then they're going to be pretty upset at you because um, it didn't have that scratch before and you're just being a crappy watchmaker so it's not a good thing not recommended to deliver the watch back with a big scratch in it so it's but these little screws are a biatch to put back in and again under the pressure of camera work I think I'd use different glasses too if I was doing this without talking anyway and I know that one of those screws is totally useless so the question is do I put it back this one seems to not gri be gripping anything which means that might be the hole it has a bit of strip in it it's a bit stripped or I don't have the ratchet in here properly so maybe if I just move this over is that in there well, maybe it is in there yeah it is in so this screw hole does not seem to be doing anything so that might be I have to deal with this because it, it ain't gripping anything so this is a past problem with this pocket watch that is the current problem with this pocket watch so sometimes when I grab the screw like this and then I turn the movement I get enough of a release from that to just pop out like that and then put it in the other screw hole there's some technique for you and then hopefully I'm getting grip on this one here I'm not getting much grip on that either so maybe that's the screw that's guilty I don't like that I don't like that at all because one of the screws is working is perfect and the other screws don't seem to be doing the job so I'm going to put this one back and then I'm going to uh, they're not just there for looks they're there to hold that plate down so if they're not doing that job then that's another problem I have with this particular movement because I thought I had two of them that were perfect and another one was just a pain in the butt but and not working like these are just turning this one here seems like it's got some grip on it this one here has zero grip on it yeah that's not gripping anything but <clears throat> anyway I'll leave it like this for now fix that later so I just put that down for now Let's see if I got and just get this thing wound up I want to see if that mainspring works or not that's what this was all about a boot I know it's gonna slip the first time I know it but I just want to see how much it slips so I can feel some movement there let me just get this out of the way while I wind this thing You know what? It seems to be holding. It held. 
So that's the um, that's good. And I got some decent amplitude on there, and I'll just put a little bit of oil on there because I think it needs some oil. Um, I do have to fix this problem here because I don't like the fact that I can't. I might take this take these off, shift it over one, and see if they hold there. Like, say, maybe this screw holds here and this one holds there. Because I, I did have two hold, two screws completely holding before, and now I've got I've got none. I'm from from two to none in like seconds, right? But before I do that, let me just throw this back in here. Good news is I didn't have to take the cannon pinion off, so all good. And let's see, our wheel in there in place, no problem. Um, I think while I'm here again, always if you got things like oiling or something you could get done while you're in the vicinity of the watch, um, then you have the face off. And again, I, I trying to remember whether I did this. I, I'm pretty darn sure because it looks pretty spanky clean right now. Uh, but I will reapply a little tiny bit of oil here. And but this does look clean as a whistle, so I don't want to put any oil where the uh, pallet fork is. I'm a non pallet fork oiler, just in case you're wondering. And when you put the second hand oil here, you got to make sure you don't it doesn't hit the base. And it looks like some guck has gotten in there. So, <clears throat> I need to get out my handy dandy Rotico. This is going to be like an hour. Didn't think it would take an hour to do this job, but luckily Facebook's not, or YouTube, I don't think it's charging me like money to put all these videos on. Let me just clean that up a bit here. What the heck was that? It actually looked like there was some fur on the bottom of that pinion, or pivot rather, for the second hand. I didn't put that there. Someone else might have, but I didn't. But I'm willing to take it off. I guess when you make videos like this, you got to be prepared to talk a lot. The other thing I want to do is make sure that this, I got a little tiny bit of oil on the outside of the cannon pinion for this to turn nicely. And a little bit there, and a little bit there. And while I'm at it, a little bit on the gears, on the teeth here, uh, when they grip there. And again, while I'm at it, I might as well there's oil here too. It's a tiny bit right there. I get an action there, yeah. And then I got excess oil here. So I want it, you don't want oil to be floating around your pocket watch. So get rid of the excess oil. And I think all the rest of this is fine. There's a spring right here. So since I'm in the world of oiling here, I might as well just put a little bit of oil on that spring too and right in there and then I like to clean up the extra oil so you don't have too much there we go that should do that should do and I already put oil on the inside there of the uh, whatever that's called <coughs> anyway so that's that again I've got a pocket watch with a uh, an hour wheel that doesn't have a leaf on it. So I'm not sure why these things, I've seen a lot of them lately that don't have a leaf on it. So, and I don't think I have a leaf to give it. So it's going to be leafless, leafless. And this would line up at the 12 o'clock position for this watch. So that would be like so. Keep my fingies away from the, uh, always keep your fingers away from the balance because that is not a good thing and then just screw this face in place see if I can how fast I can finish this off how fast can I finish this off 
one, turn it, don't touch anything, two, turn it, don't touch anything, get my fingers away from that balance, because that will cause all kinds of problems, three, turn it, don't touch anything, I think I might have done this one already, but check it anywhere, I don't want loose screws flying around, yeah, I did that already, so, there we go, it's done, the face is back on, um, for the purposes of this video, I just need to, I just need to put the hands back on, and then put the movement back in, and be back, so aligning the hands is like really tough, but you got to keep working on it until you get pretty good general alignment of the hands so that is pretty darn good right there and you need clearance for the um, for the second hand as well so I typically I'll put this there I'm going to use the word typically again but I'll put this put this in like that I have to get up close to it again but and I just usually push this down with my tweezers a bit and that should be good enough and then get the bench key out and turn it around at least I tend to turn I, I turn it around with the uh, the way it normally would turn with a time so and so I, and I check the clearance that I've got here and it's tight but it's good it's uh, no problem there with that clearance clearance for clearance and it's 12.29 right now, which is like 12.30, so I'll just put it at 12.30 and then push this in like so. And then to case it, um, you, would, you would typically, typically, oh my god, i got to stop using terms like typically, but um, it's going to go in the case um, like this, so... Uh, this is where the screws are on the other side. Keep dropping stuff. So, again, keep your fingers away from the from the movement. And then I would I uh, flip this around because I can see where these where the screws, the case screws, are gripping here. So I know I've got to put it in like that. And then find the, uh, the stem or the opening here, and just turn it a bit until you find that opening. And then you're, and I, you know, I did what I shouldn't do is put my finger on the friggin' movement. But anyway, so I've got it like this, and once I got it in this position, I don't want to put it down because it'll, the hands will, will touch the bottom, and I don't want that to happen. So what I want to do is put the case screws back in really fast. Um, so I've got it gripped nicely, uh, and then that's one and then I've got to I've got to be the morning after I still have to fix that barrel and those barrel screws which is pissing me off that there's somebody a long time ago screwed that up there we go and that works that's fully wound by the way right now so that little fix I did absolutely worked which is kind of cool um, I will put the crystal back on so I don't fart with the hands and then I will clean that crystal off or not the crystal but the face off with a bit of Rotico also I don't have any clearance problems probably with the uh, second hand you want to check that too to make sure let me just <coughs> should pull that out and check it now Anyway, I'll know whether there's clearance issues, but I don't think there's any clearance issues. It looks fine. So, that's that. And then, now I've got the that protected. I'll get rid of this so the focus is okay. <coughs> I'm going to drop a little bit of oil here. Um, and then I will... I'll put it back together for the sake of the video, but then I want to... I'm going to be playing with those screws a little later to make sure I've got all that right, so... I actually put the thinner oil on the on the center wheel. I normally put the thicker oil on the center wheel, but that's too bad. One thing you don't want to do is over oil. It doesn't help. 
all it does is create more places for the dust to, to settle and in this case I didn't get any oil so that's nice there that one didn't get much oil either I pulled my oiler out there we go that's good and then I want a bit of oil on the barrel I can't remember whether I put oil on that or not before but I will do it again I'm gonna put the thicker thicker oil in the barrel because there's more friction so and I just remembered I didn't oil the barrel the hole where the barrel is so I just put way too much oil in there so grab some of that from the top that's good so now that's oiled um, I'll check the um, I'll check the amplitude of the watch and then do the timing on it and then we're good to go so that is me fixing the spring the mainspring again I'm gonna fix fix these screws a little bit later but fixing the mainspring on an Elgin or Elgin for some people but like I said where I live there's an Elgin Street and no one calls it Elgin they call it Elgin so if you call it Elgin, you might be wrong. Hate to say it, but so that is mainspring slips. Mainspring no longer slips because I put a little notch in there, as you saw, and I believe that will fix the mainspring problem. I will keep an eye on the. Um, I will time this thing in different positions. Pen it up, pen it down, face up, face down, um, and then sideways. Those are the positions you need to time it in. And then I will look at those screws a little. But no one's looking at me. So <laughs> there it is. Beautiful pocket watch. Thanks for watching another video. It's, it is an hour. I apologize. It shouldn't have been an hour. <laughs>